10 or 15 years ago, it felt like the grown-ups ruled the world, and now it feels like the kids rule the world. And maybe, you know, I feel like I'm somewhere in between. I feel like, I still feel like a kid and I make movies and comedies, but I've been doing it for a while, and I kind of found myself in the middle. You know, there's people making movies who are 23, 24, 25, like I was when I started, and, and then people making them in their 60s and 70s. And, you know, I just sort of, my own personal experience and having a daughter and thinking about what world she's gonna grow up in, that, that kind of, all that stuff just felt like interesting fodder for a movie. His life has been working for him for a long time, but maybe the last three, four, five years, things aren't, aren't going as well, and he doesn't really want to believe it himself. You know, he's in the printing business, and, and there's Paperless Post, there's Evite, there's a lot of outsourcing to foreign countries for this kind of work, which is real. I mean, that really happens in, in a lot of industries, and he's holding on. And I think he, he gets out to, to Palo Alto, to Silicon Valley, and it's, it's almost like a Wizard of Oz kind of thing. You know, it's this whole other world that he, you know, has probably read about. He's well read and he's in the world and he, it's not like he's a guy that doesn't have, you know, a smartphone or a computer, this kind of stuff. He's not a Luddite, but, um, but you know, he, he hasn't really been exposed to this world and, and he goes through it and it just feels like this surreal uh, nightmare. You know, he's definitely playing a real person, and, and it's a ridiculous character because he's very earnest, and I think, you know, people who are super earnest, uh, he's earnest and offensive at the same time, and that's a, a unique combination. So I think he gets away with a lot of crazy things that he says, but he does it with his heart in the right place, so he's walking this tightrope, but he, he manages to get away with stuff that I thought he would never be able to get away with. Um, you know, because he's James Franco and he's got this smile and this glint in his eye and this playfulness. And so he can say some of the most offensive things to this nice Midwestern family, but he's not doing it to get a rise out of them. He's just, it's the idea is that no one taught this guy how to act. All this guy wants, he's, he's wealthy, he has it all, but all he wants is a family. You know, I mean, that's really the message of the movie from his point of view, that he just, this guy has everything, and Brian might think that his character has it all, but he's really jealous of what Brian has, which is this solid family. You know, a lot of these super wealthy guys have people who help them run their lives, and they're very high-end. A lot of them worked in hotel management or were in the army or, you know, did some combination thereof. Um, and so, you know, I, we wrote this Gustav character, and we're very fortunate to get Keegan to play him. And he's this, you know, is he German? Is he European? You don't really know exactly. He's, he's like a life coach, uh, you know, a therapist. A, uh, he runs this guy's life. He's his trainer. He's sort of a jack of all trades. And, and he's the one, who, and he, they have this deep emotional connection, Gustav and Laird. And Gustav is invested in Laird's happiness and wants him to do the right thing and gets very upset when Laird doesn't do the right thing. She's more the voice of reason in the movie, but you also need great comic timing um, to play that. It's almost, the, it's harder than, than being the funny one in quotes because you, you know, comedy is about reaction uh, to ridiculous things. So she has to do a lot with facial expressions and, and kind of making us uh, connect with her, her emotional journey because she's kind of almost the emotional center of the story. He's such a good actor that he makes these moments real, um, but he goes for it. It's not a reserved, you know, he's a reserved character, but he definitely gets driven crazy by Laird and, and his world, and, uh, and Brian embraces that. I mean, I think, you know, he seems to be having a lot of fun. You know, I'm sure after all those seasons of Breaking Bad, playing such an intense character, that he goes through a lot of pain on this movie, but it's all, you know, for the sake of laughs. So I, I think he's enjoying that, and he's, he's definitely jumped headfirst into, uh, into our, our comedic waters. You know, he's definitely playing a real person, and, and it's a ridiculous character because he's very earnest, and I think, you know, people who are super earnest, uh, he's earnest and offensive at the same time. And that's a, a unique combination. So I think he gets away with a lot of crazy things that he says, but he does it with his heart in the right place. So he's walking this tightrope, but he, he manages to get away with stuff that I thought he would never be able to get away with. 
um, you know, because he's James Franco and he's got this smile and this glint in his eye and this playfulness. And so he can say some of the most offensive things to this nice Midwestern family, but he's not doing it to get a rise out of them. He's just, it's the idea is that no one taught this guy how to act. <laughs> Keegan has a, a, this rare ability to be extraordinarily funny and grounded. And so the character could be off the rails, and uh, but, but I think every moment is sort of rooted in this emotional truth where he's, he really does care about this guy and he cares about the Flemings and he wants everyone to be happy. Uh, but he's also just such an inventive uh, comedian that, you know, he comes up with ridiculous things and, and again, manages to root them in reality. During the takes, you know, I'm watching the monitors closely just trying to watch the movie unfold. And my brain is, is going quickly and I'm shouting ideas out or thinking about, well, what if we did this or what about that? Um, so it's very, you know, it, it does make me have to be on my toes, um, you know, because I'm not just watching, sitting back, letting the actors do their thing. It's a, it's a very interactive process. You know, I think the movie is about, the, frankly, the fact that there's value in every way of doing things. The, the tech world, there's nothing wrong with high tech and with, with creating apps and playing games and stuff like that and just, you know, programming and coding, there's, that's cool. But also, uh, Ned, you know, Cranston's character's way of life, there's something very decent and important about that too, where you make personal connections and you shake someone's hand and you have a certain value system and you take your time with things. I think that's, you know, that's super important as well. Throughout the day, you just discover certain veins of comedy that, that you didn't know were going to be there in the morning. And that's, to me, it's a, it's a free for all. It's a very collaborative, open process where the actors yell things out. I'll yell out ideas during the take. They'll jump on it. They'll pitch ideas back to me. Um, obviously, it's my job at the end of the day to cull through everything and figure out what fits the tone. Or sometimes they might go down a road that is funny but not quite in the right tone and I'll try to bring them back to the right tone or um, vice versa. But it's. Uh, it just makes it fun and very alive. And, and you know, it's one of my favorite things to be on set and you just find something that you didn't, that didn't exist in the morning and by two o'clock, it's almost become a running joke on set. And then you put it in other scenes. And it, it just makes it, I think, fresh and funny and, and alive. I just hope that people kind of get on board with the characters emotionally and that allows them to feel the pain and suffering that, that Ned goes through and, and to kind of see it from Ned's side and Laird's side and Stephanie's side and just just get in there with this family and, and this new boyfriend and and you know go on this roller coaster with them.